Hey guys, what's up? Stephanie, the English coach here from EnglishFullTime.com. Today I'm here with one of my students, Long, who recently joined my course, Connect and Communicate. And we're going to talk about his recent success with his English, you know, what he was struggling with before, why he joined the course, and how he's doing now. So, hi, Long, how are you? I'm good. Hi, Stephanie. So before we begin, could you just tell everyone a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you live, how long you've been there, that kind of thing? Okay, sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Long Nguyen. I'm from Vietnam originally, but I've been in the state for about 20 years. And uh, I'm currently working at the University of Houston uh, in IT field. And outside of my 9 to 5 jobs, I also have uh, started building a business. And I have a business partner who is a brilliant in market and, you know, in digital marketing. Uh, she's really great with communication. And I let her handle all the communication with clients and dealing with them. But she said, keep telling me that, hey, you need to work on your communication skill. Because one day you're going to run this business or company on your own. So you need mm -hmm. to step it up and, you know, improve the skill while you have me, you know, take all the time you need to work on your skill. Yeah. So basically you've been living in the U S for, I think you said over 20 years, right? Or about 20 years. Yes. And I think people are going to find that really interesting because a lot of times they think that, Oh, if you've been living in the USA for that long, you're not going to need help with your English. By that time you should be fluent, confident, fine, etc. So what can you tell people that kind of think that way and think like, you know, Oh, once you live in the U S your English is going to be fine and perfect. And you're not going to have to worry about it anymore. Um, that's true, but it's also based on your personality. You know, my personality is like a kind of shy, quiet guy. You know, you never, like I try to avoid dealing with people, but when you're in a different position where you run your own business, you have to deal with clients constantly, you know, how to make clients like you and offer you the job or the business opportunity. So I'm in a different position where I have to put myself out and to deal with people issues. Mm hmm. Exactly. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about how you found me online. First of all, do you remember how you found me? Was it on Facebook or YouTube? I think I saw a couple of your videos popping up on my new feed. I think I saw one video that you would interview one of the um, uh, software engineering from uh, Brazil. Or oh, no, it was, Africa. yeah, Renee from Ecuador. That's a really popular Ecuador. video. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, and you talk to him and, and I can see how confident he is, even though his English is not that great, you know, but you can see that he can have a conversation. And, and then he said that within a very short period of time that he was able to get the confidence to get in front of a um, conference and, and speak to a thousand people. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing, you know? <laughs> I'm like, okay. Let me see uh, what Stephanie had to offer. Yeah. So I joined your mailing list. Okay, so that's it. I just joined your mailing list. And then... Yeah, then I announced the course. And then I yes. think you were one of the mm -hmm. first students to join. And so, yeah, that's exactly. basically exactly what happened with Renee and what has happened with so many students that I work with. Because at the end of the day, language skills take a lot of time to develop. But as you've learned, you know, confidence shifts, they happen in our mind and they can happen instantly. It really all depends on your perspective, how you see yourself, how you see those around you. So thanks for sharing all of that. And what I would love to do now is just really start talking about the changes you've been experiencing because we've done a couple coaching calls together and, and like the things that you shared with me completely blew me away. I was just like, Oh my gosh, you did what? So talk to us a little bit about the changes you've been experiencing in the last month and a half, because you're still in the middle of this course. Like that's the yes. crazy thing. You're not even finished. You're not close to finished. You're halfway through and yet you've already been having these amazing results. So tell us a little bit about what, what's been happening. Sure. So when I first saw your email about connect and communicate, you know, and you can be, uh, and then you, a little bit introduction about how I can improve my communication. I'm like, that's it. You know, you just hit the nail <laughs> right then for me. Cause I'm like, cause I need to work on my communication skill mm -hmm. and I'm 
pretty sure that I can um, invest time and money on this course that helped me better myself, you know, professionally. Yeah, I think and, you were the first yes. one to, to jump on that. So we talked right away, like as soon as you joined. Exactly. I'm like, hey, I need to get it going because I, I have um, so many things coming up to me. So I need to talk to Stephanie as fast as I can so I can improve my skill and be able to practice with my clients immediately. So that's how I do it. Mm-hmm. So I think when, when I first talked to you, I was kind of really nervous, I think. And then you asked me, were you nervous when I'm talking to you? And I said, yes, you know, I was very nervous uh, talking to a native speaker. Mm -hmm. Even though you live in the U.S. and you speak with native speakers on a daily basis, right? Sometimes there's just like this lack of confidence that we carry around and it's this huge burden. And I know because, you know, as you know, I learned Spanish and I dealt with this myself. So I'm bringing all of that experience to really show you guys how to overcome this. And Long, you started working on these things immediately. You started connecting with people immediately. You started interacting in our private Facebook group and just sharing progress in your results. So what are some things you've been able to do now that a month and a half ago you just weren't able to do? First, I would think changing my uh, mindset. Like my way of thinking was all wrong. You know, like always doubt myself, you know, like not confidence, always worry about, okay, gosh, I'm going to make a mistake. You know, people are going to not going to value my, my idea if I make a mistake. Constantly um, worry about myself and then put negative, all the negative talk into myself instead mm-hmm. of like, you know, hey, you're an expert in your field. You have mm-hmm. a lot of ideas to share. You are confident just at everybody. You know, you are even more um, to some people that they don't know what they're talking about. You exactly. Know? You were really putting yourself down and your expertise down and basically letting the people around you dictate how you feel, you know, that day at work rather than owning your expertise and saying, yeah, I'm an expert. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about and I'm here to share my ideas and change the world. <laughs> exactly. Instead of uh, prepare myself to do that, my mind was all worried about, oh my God, I'm going to make a mistake. Oh, it's going to be my turn. What I'm going to say? What I'm going to say next? <laughs> okay, so what about now? Like, do you, do you still deal with that? Do you still have those? No. Problems? Not at After all? Talk, not, not at all. After you talk to you, I turn the table. Wow. I, I am an expert, you know. I have more confidence now. My mind is clear because all this worry is out the door because I don't need yeah. to worry about all that nonsense. Yeah, can I just focus on what I know and what I know is best? and try to communicate that across to my audience. Yeah, I just think that is so fascinating because this is a burden that you've been carrying around for 20 years. Ever since you came to the States and have been living there, even though you've lived there for so many years and you interact with native speakers on a daily basis, constantly, I can't imagine constantly living with like a debilitating fear like that for decades, you know? So obviously Mm -hmm. as the coach, it makes me, so happy to see you and the other students have results like this and really take the things that I say to heart because it's like I see you guys there struggling and I'm like, no, I don't want you to struggle. I want you guys to be confident because I see so much in you. I see your potential, your intelligence, everything. And sometimes you need someone to believe in you first and it helps you believe in yourself, right? So you told me a couple things uh, in our last call I think two things. One, you stopped a guy on the street, a photographer, and ended up having a great conversation with him. And then also you went to some kind of like teacher conference at your son's school and talked with the teachers. And basically what you emphasized was these are all things you never would have done in the past. So talk to us about those experiences. Yes, that's right. Um, Like I say, I'm a shy person. So I avoid, you know, contact with human other people on the street, you know, I'm just like, oh, no eye contact, keep walk away, keep walking. (laughs) (laughs) Don't talk to anybody. (laughs) Yes, exactly. So I feel awkward, you know, when when I have to talk to people, because I don't know what to do. I'm not a good conversationist, I would say. So I think um, after I took your course, uh, there's a couple of homework assignments that give me the inspiration to go do it. You go go after those people whenever I have a chance. So I met a photographer who tried to take some picture for clients and just like, just come and be very genuine and very engaged, interested in what he's doing. 
And mm-hmm. I asked him, hey, are you a photographer professionally? And he said, yes. And I'm like, oh my God, I have a new camera just like you have, but I have no idea how to work this thing. Maybe you can give me uh, a few tips on how to use this device, you know, this new camera that I have. And he said, sure, why not? And I get his um, business card if he have, and, um, and I try to follow up with him like immediately. First, he's like, who is this guy? He didn't want to respond to me. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> remember I, you. <laughs> yeah, he didn't re- remember me. And I was like, I called him one and he was like having a dinner time. And I told him, oh, it's not a good time. So how about I'll call you back and we set a time. And he did. He said, hey, call me back tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I did. So I, at 10 o'clock, I text him instead of calling this time. I text him and say, hey, we have an appointment at 10 o'clock. Uh, is it a good time? Still, uh, is it still a good time? And I didn't hear from him like a, an hour later. Mm-hmm. I didn't give it up. I text him again. <laughs> <and> I say, <laughs> I'm sure you are really busy, but I just have this one question, how to use this camera. Please give me um, a call back when you have time. Immediately, he called me back. And then we just like talking on the phone. I talked about him, where he's from. He actually run in the business and tried to uh, get as many clients as he can. And, um, and then he showed me how to, use, how to work a camera. So we would FaceTime just like you and I FaceTime with each other and, and he showed me how to work the camera perfectly. That's awesome. So this is basically a guy that you met on the street. Yeah. You use strategies that you learned in the course to approach him and to get him to talk with you. And that's actually one of the trainings that we have. It's specifically called how to get people to talk with you. Uh, you got him to talk with you. You were persistent. You didn't give up. And then you ended up forming this pretty cool relationship with someone. And then you found things that you have in common. You're both starting a business or both in business. You're both trying to get clients. And that probably exactly. gave you even more to talk about. Right. The other day I was texting him and say, hey, how's it going? And he's like, how did Mrs. going? I'm like, yeah, I just have two new projects coming in. And he said, well, I'm pretty sure you're very busy with this. I'm like, yeah. That's so cool. So you still keep in touch. It all started with a stranger that you decided to take the initiative and approach on the street. And and you never used to be able to do something like that before. No. I would just like ignore mm-hmm. people. I just ignore people. I, just, I would rather work with a computer than a people. But yeah. it's completely different now. Now that I run a business, I have to deal with people on a daily basis. Yeah. So but I at the have... same time, it probably feels really good, right? Like knowing that you're transforming into this different person who doesn't have, you know, issues talking with other people. And you're just like, oh, yeah, I can talk with whoever. I like that's not even a problem for me. I bet that feels really good. It is. It's opened so many doors, many opportunity because I learned so much from talking to these people. You know, mm-hmm. They have really good networking, I can get into their network. Yeah. And learn what other people are learning, their experience, all the lessons that they struggle with, they'll share with me. That is so cool. And then really quick long, why don't you tell us also about the story talking with your son's teacher, I believe, because that was also a really interesting story. Oh, okay. So I think I I went to an event where one of the teacher at I think what middle school to high school. Because mm-hmm. my kid is in the kindergarten, so he doesn't need uh, middle school and high school yet. But I s- still come up to her and, and um, show the interest that I want to know about her school system and what do they have to offer for my kid. Like know? for the future. For the future, yes. When, when he turned to sixth grade, that's when they're accepting students at sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Um, you know, we just have a good time. She's like, talk to me all this interest um, thing, idea or, or plan. All the, I think all the program and support that the school offer for students. You know, like, uh, like this school is only have um, students with, because um, I know I read it somewhere, this school prepares students to go to college, 100%. Because mm-hmm. everyone that went to that school, they all end up in college, in, in some sort of college or university. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these kids are under disadvantaged kids who family doesn't have a lot of money. They, a lot of them are Hispanic and African-American, but they all very successfully entering the college. Mm-hmm. But how did they do that? 
So with the school support, you know, the school will give you financial to, to take those SAT courses mm -hmm. because parents probably doesn't have the money to support this kid to go to uh, take those uh, advanced placement tests, SAT, to enter college. But mm -hmm. this school, you know, take all this away. You know, they give the scholarship for students. Uh, I think they pay them twice a month throughout the, the high school to take those SAT tests. So if they if you didn't pass the second time, you have to pay on your own, out of your pocket. Mm -hmm. But if you have not, then they'll keep going. Uh, I think they pay them two times to make yeah. sure you pass your test. It's funny because you sound like an expert now on this school, the program, what they offer. And this is because you talked with these people for how long? <laughs> I think I would, um, I talked to her like an hour for mm -hmm. one hour. And then I'd come back. Um, for another hour to talk about something else, totally different. We yeah. talk about history, talk about LinkedIn, how they recruit people, and totally different things. The first section was all about school for my kid. The second section is more building relationship. Yeah. I want to learn more about what she does and what she does for networking and what she uses that effectively um, to connect with other people. Basically, she would say, oh, LinkedIn was my number one tool to connect to, um, to people who mm -hmm. want to work for her school. Oh, so she was basically like the principal of the school or one of the leaders? She was the program... Um, coordinator? Yes, coordinator or program developer. So I just want to point out again, because uh, when, we, when you told me this originally, I was like, you talked for how long? With who? What? A stranger? Because I knew your struggles previously. So basically, you talked with this stranger for two hours, and some people are hearing that going, oh my gosh, I can't even talk to my family members for 30 minutes. Like, some people just are not talkers, right? But mm -hmm. you used to not be a talker yourself, right? But right. again, you learned these strategies, like how to maintain a conversation, how to get people to talk with you, how to talk with them. And now it's just completely opening up new opportunities. And again, you're just learning that this is the best way to move your life forward and to learn new things. This is something that I learned a long time ago, connecting with people, talking with them directly, asking questions. It is the best way to get information. And yeah. once you learn these strategies and the psychology behind all of this because so many people you know they're just focused on oh I want to learn a language but nobody's thinking about how to use that language strategically to get the things that they want in life because you know we're not just using a language we're using it with other people so you have to think about the other person's perspective and how to position things so that they will help you move forward and get what you want because if not we just get into problems with communication and we have mis miscommunication you know so Anyhow, I guess just to wrap it up here, like what are some final thoughts that you would like to share? Would you recommend this course to other people? If so, why? And what kind of person do you think would really benefit from it? Yes, I, I would definitely uh, recommend this course to everyone because definitely have a lot of lessons. All her lessons is really valuable and fun to watch. And I watched them several times, not just one, you know, because Stephanie is a kind of person, you know, it's very friendly and very supportive. And um, it's not like my, uh, my business partner. She's like always, it's like, oh, you need to get it work on this. Instead of very supportive, she's just nagging about it. Mm -hmm. But you are different. You was like, you unlocked so many uh, doors to me. Like, like my, um, you went to my head and clean up all the mess in my head. Really. <laughs> That's a really great analogy. Thank you. Exactly. Like clean house. Because I don't have to all worry about this worry anymore. That is so awesome to hear. I'm so glad. And I cannot wait to see where you are with your life, your confidence, your business, everything a year from now. Sure. I'll keep you updated. Thank, thank you, you so, so much, much. Stephanie. Yeah, and thank you for doing this interview with me. I am just so excited to hear about what, what you're doing with this material. Yeah, I appreciate it. Great. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.